It says the Bell McCaffrey Trophy. So, since Rose is not here, we could maybe sing to Isabel. Happy birthday to Isabel. Good morning everyone Good morning. and welcome to our service this morning, changing the weather after some lovely sunshine, it's a wee bit cooler today. I'd like to welcome Emily to play for us this morning, Catherine's away in other business but um, we're delighted that you're here. We're going to start our service by singing hymn 481, Jesus is the name we honour. Just in case you don't know the tune, not familiar with the hymn, Emily said she'll play it over for us. Thank you. 
Now let us draw near in prayer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for those you call to follow you throughout the years. For those who have had the courage to respond in faith, help us as individuals, as a congregation, to be ready to respond to you, willing to commit ourselves to your service and to walk in your footsteps all the way. When you speak your word, when you call us by name, help us to say yes to you. When you ask us to venture out into the unknown, to be strong, courageous, obedient, and faithful. Living Lord, help us to say yes to you. When you ask us to listen to your voice, to your word that confronts, challenges, teaches, inspires. Living Lord, help us to say yes to you. When you ask us to reach out and walk, to the indifferent, the hostile, the unlovely, the unacceptable, help us to say yes to you. When you ask us to let go of self, to share, to care, to give, and to sacrifice, living Lord, help us to say yes to you. When you ask us to go out in your name, to speak, work, love and live for you, living Lord, help us to say yes to you. Lord Jesus Christ, as you call the apostles at the start of your ministry, so you have called so many of our sins. Yet your call comes to us this morning as we gather here, asking each one of us to respond to you in faith to share in the work of your church, that your kingdom may grow from strength to strength. So come and be with us, that we might hear your voice, and when you speak your word, living Lord, help us to say yes. And hear us as a family we pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Boys and girls, our boys, we've got three boys here, many girls of all ages, as well as some of the others as well. So I've got a story to tell you, a story perhaps you've heard many times before. What is it? It's a camel and his name is Brian. Do you think he was a happy camel? Do you think so? Well, he wasn't very happy at all. He wasn't happy because he had two humps on his back. And he just wasn't pleased to have them there. Once out walking, he happened to see an elephant. And he said to the elephant, I really love your ears. Because you've got big, big ears. And you can hear all that's being said. I wish I had your ears. So without any further matters, he received the years to became a camel elephant. Can you say that word, a camel elephant? Yeah, camel elephant. And then he went a wee bit further on and he saw an antelope. He could see the antelope because he had long legs. And he thought, I like long legs because I could run fast and I could jump and I could do many things. And again, he got his wish. So he became a camel elephant 
antelope. What about that? Do you like to be a camel elephant antelope? No. And then, again, he went a wee bit further on, and he saw a camel elephant antelope pelican. And he thought, a pelican? You've got a long, long beak. I'd like to have a pelican's beak as well. And again, he got what he wanted. He got his wish. So he became a what? He became a camel elephant antelope pelican. Would you like to go like that? Yeah? And then he heard a bird singing. And he thought to himself, I'd love to be able to sing and whistle like that. So he became a canary because there's a canary that was singing high up in the trees. And so he became a camelophant antelope canary. That's a long name, isn't it? Yeah? That's what he became. And then he went further on and he looked into a pool of water and he saw, goodness, am I really like that? I don't want to be like that at all. I'd rather be a camel with two humps. And so, without a to-do, he became a camel again. That's the story of Brian. He was happy with the way he was, even though he got all his wishes. Looking at himself in the pool, he realized he was better off as he was, as he was. And you know, each one of us is different. We're not all camel, elephant, pelicanaries. We're all different. But God made us the way we are, and he wants us to be like him and like Jesus. God chooses and loves us just the way we are. And we must remember that each one of us is loved by God. He cares for each one of us, as I've said many times before, loving us as though there were only one of us to love. So we're going to sing now another song, and this is God loves you and I love you, and that's the way it should be. to Luke chapter 5 verses 1 to 11. That's Luke chapter 5 verses 1 to 11. One day Jesus was standing on the shore of Lake, of Lake Gennesaret while the people pushed their way up to him to listen to the word of God. He saw two boats 
pulled up on the beach. The fishermen had left them and were washing the nets. Jesus got into one of the boats. It belonged to Simon and asked him to push up a little from the shore. Jesus sat in the boat and taught the crowd. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, push the boat out further to the deep water and you and your partners let down your nets for a catch. Master, Simon answered, we worked hard all night long and caught nothing. But if you say so, I will let down the nets. They let them down and caught such a large number of fish that the nets were about to break. So they motioned to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so full of fish that, bo that the boats were about to sink. When Simon Peter saw what had happened, he fell on his knees before Jesus and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. He and the others with him were all amazed at the large number of fish they had caught. The same was true of Simon's partner, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. They pulled the boats up on the beach, left everything and followed Jesus. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Alan. Our next hymn is hymn 532, Lord, you have come to the seashore. <coughs>
us draw near to God in prayer, let us pray. May the words from my lips and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord our God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Picture the sea. The setting is Lake Gennesaret. Another name from the Sea of Galilee. Dawn is breaking. In the early morning light, the fishermen who have been toiling all night, catching fish, head back for shore. When they arrive, there is a crowd of people standing there. People perhaps who are fish merchants, or people who are just wondering how many fish the fishermen have caught. And in the midst of that crowd, there stands Jesus. His fame by this time perhaps has spread far and near. They know that he is an itinerant preacher from Nazareth. But Jesus came to where they were. He knew they were by the seashore. And so he came to meet with them and to speak God's word. He began to preach and the crowds gathered. So much so that he was in danger of getting into the water himself. Looking over his shoulder, he sees a fishing vessel and notices two men washing their nets. And he says, can I use your boat? to preach to the people, a request readily granted. Jesus gets into the boat and he begins to preach. And more and more people come towards him because they are hungry, they are thirsty, they are yearning for the word of God. I wonder if people are yearning, thirsting for God's word today. In the midst of all the confusion that is going on in this troubled world, Parliament, America, elsewhere, are people not looking for a word of authority, of power from God himself? Jesus went to where the people were. Is it not about time that we went to where the people are? Yes, it's great to gather in church Sunday by Sunday, but where are the people today? Out with these walls, in their new flats, in the parks, in the shops. The church ought to be reaching out to those who very seldom come here or perhaps don't come at all. But then having preached to the people, Jesus turns to Peter, to Simon and says, how many fish have you caught? He received a negative response. We've caught nothing. We've been toiling hard at work all night. And we haven't even caught a tittle up. Jesus then said, reach out into the deep, into the deep, let down your nets for a catch and you will find some. But master, Peter said, we've been at hard work all night long. We haven't caught anything. If fish won't bite during the night, then they will not be biting during the day. They have been at work toiling hard and long all night and now they long to get home to have some breakfast perhaps and to get to bed to have some shut eye. But Jesus said, stretch out into the deep and you will find some. And Peter said, at your word Lord, I will do that. Simon was a fisherman, Jesus a carpenter. Peter knew all about fishing. Jesus knew very little. And yet, Peter, Simon, was willing to do what Jesus said. When we read God's word, when we turn to him in prayer, when God speaks to us through a hymn perhaps, are we willing to listen? And if we are willing to listen, are we willing to act? 
upon what Jesus says to us? Or do we say, that's for somebody else, that's not for me? Or do we say, here I am, Lord, what would you have me do? Simon was willing to stretch out into the deep and let down his nets for a catch. And in taking God's word, listening to what Jesus had to say, they find a great shoal of fish, so much so that the nets were in danger of breaking. Back ashore, having asked for help from the other fishermen, Peter, Simon, is left with Jesus. And notice that Simon doesn't glory in his success, but rather falls down at Jesus' feet and says, Away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. And Jesus says to him, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, fishers of women. Are we willing to follow Jesus in today's age? Are we willing to do what Jesus asks of us? Are we willing to speak a word for the Master? Are we willing to lead others to him? Outreach is so important in today's church. Perhaps that's one of the reasons why the church is looking to the future, planning ahead, needing to find people who go out into the deep, if you like, and win others for him. Are we willing to be challenged in that way? Are we willing to speak a word for the master? Or is this as far as it goes? Come to church on a Sunday, get it over and done with, and then get back to the usual work during the week? Or are we willing to do what Christ asks of us? Our hymn is 533, Will You Come and Follow Me?
Mai poți să ne continui de sunt prea. gave your only son because you love the world so much. We stand before you this morning to pray for the peace of the world. We pray for peace in Sudan, Ukraine and Russia, Israel and Palestine, and in all other parts of the world where tomorrow is trouble, trial, violence, and injustice has stood high. Move among us by your spirit. Break down barriers of fear, suspicion, and hatred. Heal the human family of its divisions and unite it in the bond of justice and peace. We pray for Scotland and the United Kingdom we pray that you enrich our country so much so that our common life will also be enriched. Strengthen the forces of truth and goodness. Teach us to share prosperity that those who live their lives impoverished may pass from need and despair to dignity and joy. We pray for those who suffer around us, within our congregation and those in the hospital who are ill. Surround them, O oh Lord, with your love. Support them with your strength. Console them with your comfort and give them hope and courage beyond themselves. We ask that you look upon our families, for the ones whom we love so dearly. Protect them at home, support them in times of difficulties and anxiety that they may grow together in mutual love and understanding and rest content in one another. We happily pray for the church, that you keep her true to the gospel and responsive to the gifts and needs of all. Make known your salvation through the power of the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the witness of the faith of the church that we all continue to worship you in truth and in spirit. For our beloved ones, we remember with thanksgivings as many as have gone before us in the way of Christ, keep us united with all your people on earth and in heaven and grant that as we journey through the years we may know joy that are without end and at the last come to that abiding city where you reign in glory and everlasting through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn is 512, to God be the glory, great things he hath done.
Peter to follow him. Simon, who wasn't without spot or blemish, neither are we. And yet you can use us just as we are to do your work today by your enabling spirit. So may your blessing rest upon us. May the love of Jesus fill us with love for you and with, for one another. And the peace and the strength and the hope of the Holy Spirit be within our hearts always. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Please remain standing as the Bible is taken from the sanctuary. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> 